Speaker. Um, I, I'm very grateful to be speaking in this debate. I support the Government's amendment. I hugely welcome the support of my colleagues, and particularly uh, the Honourable Member uh, for, for Dundee, who did so much work for Fair Fuel UK on this and attended the debate in Westminster Hall, which the Honourable Lady uh, just spoke about. The, the, the case for cheaper petrol is economic, social and, and moral. And economic because the AA say that keeping three pence off fuel prices will pump £1.8 million into our economy every single day. And that is supporting high street demand when it is a collapsing in Europe. Social because fuel tax is a duty, uh, a fuel duty is a tax on everything and we should be honest about who is paying it. When we talk about motorists, they are not a special interest lobby group. And as Fair Fuel UK has shown, and many honor other honourable members, motorists are everyone. Uh, mums driving to school, children on a bus, pensioners hit by inflation. And that is why an issue, it is an issue of social justice. The economy is important, but it's only half the argument. But it's morally right as well. Because as I've set out in other debates, fuel duty is regressive. The ONS said last year it hits the poorest twice as hard as the richest. Fuel prices are now, in essence, a poverty trap, adding to our dole queues. The average motorist in my constituency in Harlow pays £1,700 a year to fill up the family car. Uh, and that is a huge amount and are clearly unsustainable. Now, people have talked on the other side of the house that this being a U-turn. Well, actually, I would say that it's an L-turn. Yeah, yeah. um, the government have listened, and they deserve huge credit for yeah, doing yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. And you know something? When I spoke to my constituents on the weekend, no one said, this is a U-turn, oh, when was this said, and who said what, and uh, uh, what minister knew about it, when and why. They said thank you uh, to the government for actually yeah, listening yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, motorists. Yeah. And uh, the Chancellor and the Economic Secretary and her predecessor, who's now the Transport Secretary, have done more to cut fuel taxes in two years than uh, uh, the opposition did in a decade. Yeah, yeah, and, and their yeah. 2011 budget saw Labour's rise cancelled and the fuel duty cut by one pence. And in last year's autumn statement, Labour's January rise was scrapped after the campaign uh, by Fairfield UK and, uh, and the MPs. Then last week, the government delayed Labour's August rise. Now, this is a radical tax-cutting agenda, targeted in a way to help the poor. It shows the government is on the side of the little guy supporting aspiration yeah, and yeah, hard yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Quite right. Now, I listened to the Today programme interview with the Shadow Chancellor, and I say to the Honourable Lady Opposite, this is not a decision done in a day. I and many others have been to see Treasury Ministers over many weeks and have led delegations to see relevant Ministers, and I knew for a very long time the Government were, were considering this issue. Honourable Member for uh, making those points, I, and I would ask him if those discussions were going on for that length of time, would he not therefore have expected that the Government would have come and said how it was going to be paid for? If you look at, if you look at the um, debate in Westminster Hall, which the Honourable Lady spoke about, my Honourable friend, um, the member for Norfolk, the Minister, um, uh, did not give an equivocal view uh, either way on this issue and said that the government were, were, were looking at it. And so I think it is important that the discussions happen and then they came to the House for Treasury questions. What better way of yeah, informing yeah, the House right. um, that they were going to stop quite the August right. rise? Now, going back to the Today interview with the Shadow Chancellor, he said um, that Labour had acted on petrol prices. But if you look at the note from the House of Commons Library, it says, from 2000, the Labour government increased road fuel duties. In its 2009 budget, the Labour government announced that in future years, fuel duties should rise by one pence a litre above inflation. Up and up and up. In the next budget, they proposed that the escalator should apply at least until 2014-15, and that the increase set for 2010 and 11 would be phased in over the coming tax year in three stages. Fuel prices continue to rise strongly, driven, driven by this increase in duty rates. And that is the record we inherited and which we are now having to unwind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't give way because um, I've got to allow the time for the Minister to speak. I do apologise to my honourable friend. But there are still problems. Fuel is at pound thirty a litre, and this is unsustainable. The RAC has said that duty revenues are shrinking every year as people are driven off the roads. And we have to stop seeing cars as a ca cash cow. Now, I accept that the government can only do so much. We're always held hostage by the international oil price. But, as has already been noted, pump prices are quick to rise, but it feels like you need a court order in order to get them down. 
Evidence shows that from May to August last year, oil prices fell by 5.5%, but petrol and diesel stayed high, falling by just only 1.5%. Now, the OFT have said they won't investigate the UK oil market, and I'm uh, petitioning the Backbench Committee to have a motion so that Parliament can consider and urge the OFT to actually investigate the UK oil market that clearly looks to many people as uncompetitive and unfair. And then finally, there is the problem of local variation in petrol prices, especially in rural areas, but also in towns like Harlow. And residents often write to me saying that fuel is 5p cheaper only a couple of miles down the road. And there is no explanation for it other than a lack of competitiveness. Now, Germany, Austria and America have uh, initiated fuel price regulations to limit price rises, and this is something we should be doing. In conclusion, um, Madam Deputy Speaker, the charts from the economic sector have given Harlow families and many millions of motorists across the country at least six months breathing room, and I, and I welcome this. And I would urge the government to look seriously at the long-term cost of fuel and petrol and see what else they can do. And I'd urge them also to put pressure on the OFT to do a market study. I will be voting wholeheartedly for the government's amendment, and I would urge the House to join me. Yeah. Yeah. Minister. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you very much indeed, Madam Deputy Speaker, and, um, and with just a few minutes remaining to me, allow me to respond to a few points that have been raised tonight and in, in some detail, if I can, the uh, new clause tabled by my right honourable friend. Let me first of all um, take up some of the themes raised by my honourable friend for Harlow, who has indeed campaigned assiduously on this uh, matter to the, very, to the benefit of his constituents uh, and others. Let me uh, first